Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Hey, 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 folks, I had a conniption there. Ah, uh, conniption fit? Yes, yes, or a hissy fit. Oh, my dad yes. would say. <laughs> hissy. Having a hissy fit. Hissy and conniption. Always insulting when your dad said you had a hissy fit. You're like, I'm no hissy. Yeah, because hissy was his way of saying pussy, which it, is another way of saying the F word. Exactly, which is now F word has just become cuck. Right. It's funny how we just we just we just do a little three card Monty on all the offensive words. Yes, it's cuck, F A G, yeah, hissy, pussy, wussy, yeah, sissy, w- wussy, Nancy, right, Nancy boy. That was a tough one too. Oh yeah, quit being a Nancy boy. Yeah, yeah. boy, it was hard times. Hard times as a youth in the nineties. You really got your ass kicked. Yeah, it was horrible every day, all day. And by the way, it's not any better now with online. It's oh. like we became adults, so there's less of it to your face. But now every day it's online. We couldn't avoid it. Now we got we got it as a kid face to face, and now we get it online face to screen every day. Someone's like, "Hey, is this Joe List or what?" And it's like the ugliest human being I on know. the planet. I've I just want to f- take <laughs> take my life. I posted one or two. I had to stop every day. It's like and it gets uglier and uglier. It's I horrible. Know. There's never one guy that I'm like, hey, all right, look at this. That's why it's so annoying when you get the black guy who's like, oh, we all look alike. I'm like, no, no, you look like that guy. I'm not saying you all look alike, but but I get you look like him eight times a day. It's just some fat guy with curly hair. I figured out a way to say two black people look alike without it being offensive. Lay it on me, fatty, because I don't know what to do. So I'm you know I'm a big tennis gay. I love the tennis. There's this guy Francis Tiafo, American player, black guy. He's ripped, and I say you know Daniel Kaluuya could play him. Oh, that's not bad. That's good. Because if you say, "Hey, that guy looks like him," you, that's bad. Right? Somehow, somehow. But I can say, "Hey, that guy could play him." Because then you could go, "What do you think they all look like?" I'm like, "No, I'm saying he's a great actor. He can shape shift." Aha! Uh-huh. He would play you in the movie. It's not bad. That's not bad. I don't know. It's something. And now you're in a movie. Now you got a star. Yeah. Todd Glass used to have that funny joke about uh, people always say you look like, uh, but it was always insulting. Like. You kind of look like John Goodman. I mean, a handsome John Goodman. I right. mean, a good-looking pig, <laughs> whatever it was. But uh, it's so true. It's never like, hey, you're like Timothy Chalamet over there. Right. Yeah, it's like it's John Cusack with AIDS. Right. Yes, exactly. You look like uh, so-and-so if their teeth were shit and they had a small dick and herpes. Exactly. I'm like, all right, Mom, take it easy. <laughs> yeah. You look like Kirk Cameron with uh, Down syndrome and... Uh, <laughs> You know, I think Kirk Cameron has down some. Oh room. well, hey, good for him. He can, she should model for Victoria's Secret. He's got some problems. Yeah, I think he's a religious kook. That's what I mean. Uh, yeah, which was the original back in the day. If you were like a religious nut, you were like, oh boy, this guy's off the deeper. But now, if you got blue blue hair and a side shave, you're like, uh oh, it's a she, him, her, hey, ha ha, hoo hoo. Did you say deeper? Huh? <laughs> Did I? I think he said off the deeper. He's off the deeper. <laughs> I think it's deep end, if I I'm know, not mistaken. I'm, I'm mixing it up. Oh, I see. Oh, yeah. Remember Deep Poo? Remember him? Deep Poo. <laughs> like I a train? A, train <laughs> deep. Oh, I thought he meant when the toilet overflows. That's a Deep Poo. <laughs> no, remember he, he worked for uh, Bobby. He was one of Bobby's oh, guys. Deep Poo. Deep Poo. Yeah, he had, some, he had some problems. Yeah, I think so. But I think he's still around. But he did one of the funniest things ever. Let's hear it. Because he, you know, whatever. I think I think he might still be around. I think he's a comic. But we oh, have the right. Yankee Swap every year on Christmas. Sure. Which you bring in a gift. And you're, you're familiar with the Yankee Swap. You gift it. You pick a number. You then a you number. get to take the gift. It's a little hurtful. Yeah, it's a little weird. But so his I get gift, fucked every year on that. His contribution to the Yankee Swap was a one-way bus ticket to Baltimore. <laughs> I was like, that's gold. That's great. That's a great gift. Very funny. Everyone had a dildo or, a, you know, and Bobby and Lewis always bring in like something. Lewis Gomez brings in something that podcasts and, is, I mean, sponsors his podcast. So it'll be like speakers or some oh, shit. Oh, right, right. It's and a freebie. then somebody got a uh, one-way ticket to Baltimore on a bus. That's gold. Pretty funny. Whether you use it or not, it's still funny because it's like, hey, get out of here. Right. I had the Yankee swap at the lady's house uh, for Christmas, 
And you know you're the outcast already. You're the uh, you're the outsider. I'm the Norman. They're a bunch of uh, lady people. Mm-hmm. You know, relatives. They all know each other: brother, sister, mom, dad, cousin. I'm the weirdo. Mm-hmm. So already you feel out of place. So I really bring a good gift because mm-hmm. I gotta bring the heat. It's a it's not my family, so I'm a loser already. Yeah, and no matter what you bring, they can go, what the fuck? If you bring too nice a gift, they're like, it yes, thinks it's better than us? Exactly. Especially so you, up in Mass. You really got to, yeah, you really got to walk that tightrope. So I can't remember what I got, but it was a, it was a real humdinger of a gift. And it, re- it wasn't too big, it wasn't too small. It was right down the Goldilocks porridge in the middle. And I ended up walking out of there with an oversized paper clip. Paper clip. That was my gift. Oh, I, I got I got like a like a headphone or something cool, and then they go up. Oh, I'll be taking that, so you take this. So I already felt like the outcast. I spent too much money on the gift, and I walked out of there with the oversized paper clip. It was like it was like a modern art. Oh, it's this big. It was metal. I had to check it. I hate modern art. I hate old art. I hate all art. Fuck art. Artsy fart. fartsy. Fart is better than art. That's true. Maybe a painting, sure. Like I like a landscape, Ooh, a mountain, that's nice. a waterfall, that kind of stuff. But a painting of like a lady. <laughs> oh yeah, who needs that? Come on! Now I got a clip? lady in my house, peering at me in the in the parlor. I tried to do this on stage, but they they only paint big titted women. You never see an a cupped woman from like the 13th century. Ah. Well, they got those flowery uh, dresses with the big old turtleneck. I don't know. I feel like I've seen some flats. Maybe, but I, I always think just a, a triple D lady with no eyebrows. Just yeah, flat earther. I, you know what they did back in the day? They did the 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 prop up. That's what somebody said after I did the bit. You know when you have a bit, you do, you try. Oh, shit, well, I feel bad. I and then somebody's like, point. somebody's like, nah, it's just the way they wore. They wore the thing that squished the bit, tits up. And you're uh, like, all right, well, that's the end of that. Yeah, people really like to rain on your anal there. Well, I mean, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't like my piece that I was like, there's a real, here comes the thing. Sure. It was more of just a, you ever notice that? Is my crazy? And then someone's like, no, no, it's the push up. Right, right. And you're like, all right, well, whatever. But well, if you don't have tits, you, the push can only go so far. But also, I think back in the day, those paintings were like the original Photoshop. Because you, let me throw a little extra hair on Abe Lincoln. Let me throw a little extra tit on uh, Betty Ross there. That's a good point. Yeah. Maybe they had small tits, but they painted them with huge I cans. I think so. A couple extra hundred bucks or whatever, an extra chicken, whatever they paid back then. There was a Simpsons episode where Marge became this great painter, and she, she was hired to paint uh, Mr. Burns, and she painted him nude. And oh, uh, they put it in the big uh, gallery, and he goes... I want to be. Uh, I want to thank you for being generous my with my genitalia. And she goes, I thought I was being insulting. That's <laughs> fun, fun gag. I'm just reminded of uh, Gary Gullman, one of my favorite comics sure. of all time. He used to have an old bit way back in the day, early 2000s, about how his parents were old. They had him, which is true. They had him when he was like 50 or something. Uh-huh. And he was. It was embarrassing because I was at school in third grade. They said, "Go home, ask your parents. We want to come in, ask them what." the price of milk was and who was president <laughs> and everybody had answers like it was president kenny kennedy when they were born did uh-huh. i say that part when your parents were born what was the price of milk when they were born when they were born got it and who was president <laughs> he said everyone was like uh, john f kennedy and uh, nickel and then right. he had to go and he goes uh when my parents were born the president was julius caesar and the price of milk was a chicken <laughs> Chicken is funny. Chicken, Ooh. you got it out. You got it out. Julius Caesar was uh, president. <laughs> <laughs> Almost lit you there. But yeah, you got it all. <laughs> That's good stuff. Well, it's funny stuff. A chicken is payment is never not good. That's always classic. <laughs> Price of milk was a chicken. You know, somebody Woo. gave me some great advice. <laughs> somebody gave me some great advice once about uh, men. This guy, older guy, older cat. I was probably, I just probably turned 30. I was a young whippersnapper, booze bag, poon hound, whatever you want to call it. And he goes, just remember, you think 40 is old, but when you're 58, you got a lot of time left. Mm. And I think there's something there because look at, you're married. Sure. You're married 10 years. Well, I've been together 11 years, married five years. Oh, shit. Sorry. Okay. That makes sense. You've been together 11 years. And then you think, ah, I mean, I don't want to step on your asshole here, but you think, hey, uh, I like that. We, we made it. We made it through. Now what? I could, you could, you got a whole other life ahead of you. I know. I mean, by the way, every day I hope one of us dies just to kind of see what's out there. Exactly. But, but no, it's it's a weird thing because you're the youngest you're ever going to be. 
you may feel old right now. Right now. I mean, this is it. This and then is it. People you know, complain about age. Oh, I'm getting old. This I feel old, but I'm like, but you're gonna be old, right? But you're not old. Now. Exactly. You're not old. Like Seinfeld got married at 50, and I think he had a kid at 52, and you're kind of like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck is that? But ah, he did a lot of living, and uh, he just. He did all the, the marriage on the back half. Yeah, and if you're rich as he is, you can really live a long life. Uh -huh. You got the top, you got one thing, you got a sore, you cough, you go to the doctor, they got 14 lights and lasers on you. Totally. Plus, you have the dietitian, you got the, the trainer, you got the less stress. There's a lot right. of, you can really go the distance if you got some money. Yeah, I heard that another guy or a gal said that once she was like, uh, Man, this guy looks good. This movie star, uh, he must have great genes or whatever. Heretic, and somebody else goes. Now he's rich. Right. When you're rich, you got the creams and the oils. They're they're rubbing stones on you and crystals and blowing you. It's a whole different world if you're rich. And you can have a doctor come right to your house. You can get the uh, the IV. The, the the they just put shit right in you. Yeah, essential oils, uh, Botox, you name it. All the stuff. The amount of people on Botox is frightening. It's it's now you have to do it. You have to. It's and it's, it's uh, part of it. We talked about this last week. N none of us asked for it. It wasn't yes. us going, "Hey, what the hell? We, was, we get some Botox, get some long eyelashes, get the, the pubes, whatever." It's weird because I hate. To, I don't want to, you know, talk shit out of uh, preschool, but you see these uh, these Courtney Coxes, mm -hmm. and she was a pretty lady, friends, fun time lady. Bruce Springsteen video. And now she said so much work done, and I hate the name drop there, but you're like, you look A, you look like a different human being, mm -hmm. and B, how the hell are you going to act? All acting is just, uh, ah, it's expressions, you know, <laughs> right, it's right. Facial, facial movements, and with the Botox, you're going, yes. Not a terrific actor to begin with, I might well, add. I mean, I, I'm not saying she's, you know, I'm not saying I'm better than her. I got a movie coming out called Fourth of July. It's really something. In theaters soon. And I stink. The movie stinks. The script stinks. My asshole stinks. Sure, you got that right. But Courtney Cox wasn't exactly a, a shape shifter. You know, she wasn't uh, Marlon Brando or Meryl I, Streep. I never, I can't tell. Once you're in a sitcom, it's, it's like wine. People go, this is great wine. I'm like, it's all wine. I don't know. It's all pipes, but I think a sitcom... They're having the more fun. Uh -huh. I think a sitcom, because it's a group, and you just kind of memorize the lines before. You're like, what is it again? Okay, just say it, because it's right. all, you got to go week to week. It's fun. You like the characters. I think it's like a podcast. The uh -huh. audience loves it, but we're having more fun than they are. You got that right. This is a good time. I come in here, I'm like, this is going to be great. We're going to go fuck around for an hour. Yeah. That's why it was so crazy back then. If you got on a sitcom, it was like winning the lottery. Right. You know, when we look at it like, oh, they're the best actor for the job. No, 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 no. They just made it. They just got lucky hollywood used to be a lot more of like you're tapped you're in you made it you're in the club now and now i feel like you can kind of backdoor it with a little anal a little podcast a little internet a little youtube i was watching uh family guy love the family Guy. Oh, a lot of great jokes when he's talking about stewie's just naming uh youtube stars uh -huh. and brian the dog goes who's that he goes nobody knows who he is but he's rich just like, and he names another YouTube star, and Brian goes, who's that? He goes, nobody knows, but he's rich. Oh, that's fun. And then uh, Stewie taps on the Fox logo in the corner. He goes, this, this is done. Oh, That's amazing. Wow. But they break that wall where he's tapping on the logo, wow. and he goes, this is done. And I was like, this is so brilliant. Brilliant. so good. Cutting edge. so on point. He named seven people you never heard of. They wow. all have 40 million people. It's By the way, a fan wrote to me and accused me of lying about not knowing what, what was the show you mentioned? Hot Stuff? Hot stuff. The YouTube thing. Oh, uh, um, Hot Bagel stove. Bites. What is that? Hot ones. Hot ones. Hot ones. Thank you, Shelbo. Some guy, he's a fan. He's a Tuesday. He's messaged me before. You're great. He goes, hey, I got to ask, why do you pretend to not know about things? You're not uh, the only one that's done this. Is this an ego thing? He accused me of lying. I'm like, what do you want me to do? He's like, it's all over YouTube. And I got to tell him, like, I don't listen to many podcasts. And I don't watch YouTube. I'm a TV guy. I'm from the 80s. Also, it's weird. I get lying that you know. Oh, yeah. I've yeah, heard of that. Yeah, sure. Bridges of Madison County. That's a classic. I caught that. That's a norm joke. But uh, why would you lie about not knowing? I don't know, but I'm like, I don't know what to tell you. And I was with Ray Ellen, Tony V, and Sarah Talamash at the time, three comedians of varying ages. Yeah. I said, you guys ever heard of this? They go, no, no, no. Well, so, you guys are all, they're all over 90, those people you <laughs> named. I looked up. I looked up 
the views, there's one with Bill Burr, who's pretty famous, relatively famous, from three weeks ago. It's got four million views. There you go. There's 350 million people in the country. Sure. That's 346 million people that haven't watched it. I'm like, that checks out. Hot Ones is not that big. It's big. It's bigger than us, but we're unknown retards. Yeah, hopefully. I don't want to get a hot one known. <laughs> That's a horrible life. But yeah, no, I'm you're like, right. You think I'm lying about hot ones? Why would I make that up? It's very strange. And then why Yeah, why would you lie? I could see if you fucked the guy from Hot Ones. You're like, I never caught that one. I don't know anything about hot ones, you know? But if you didn't, why would you lie that you don't know? Yeah, and I'm like, I know other stuff. Yeah. I can tell you who's ranked 68 in the WTA <laughs> rankings. I'm like, sure. I, I just don't watch hot ones. Yeah, like, what well. is it, by the way? Someone eats a buffalo wing? What do I give a shit? You know what I think it is? It's these irony points. You know when you go, Super Bowl, uh, get a get a home run. Blip, 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 blip. And everybody, everybody's like, oh, he's cool. He doesn't care. Right. I think they think you're trying to pull that shit. Yeah, I'm like, I'm a pretty honest guy. I, I don't know what hot ones is. I'm sorry. Honest. Now I know. You eat a hot shit. And he's like, also, I'm like, we talked about it in the podcast. I still don't know what it is. I don't even remember talking about it. I think it's basically eat a hot wing, and then you interview. he interviews you, and then you shit blood. I don't know. I, I never catch the end because I, so, I get a little bored. Yeah, I don't get it either. And I'm like, also, you've never heard of, uh, you know. Uh, Bring the Pain or uh, Geraldo. He's probably heard of that. But yeah, who's true. some of the other ones that are new? That you know. uh, like a, Maybe even a, a Stephen Wright or a. Sure. I don't know. Sam Marill. I'm sure I've heard of something you've never heard of. You got that right. But, uh, yeah, not everyone knows who Hot Ones is. Also, I don't watch YouTube. I put my YouTubes up, and I go, oh, this guy called me a fan. This guy called me an idiot. This guy says I suck. Yeah. That's it. Well, you got to stop reading Shelby's thread. But, right. uh, no, I hear you. It, it's a lot. To, there's 8 zillion shows out there. There's 14 zillion podcasts, and there's 19 zillion porn categories. So who could keep up with all of it? And then people get mad. You don't know about the thing I know about? Right. I don't know. I'm not in your world. You got a whole different bubble, you queef. Yeah, YouTube stinks. I watch sports. I watch movies. That's it. Man, I don't know about YouTube stinking. YouTube's got some gold. I'm sure it's got gold, and uh, I'm trying to put some stuff on there. There you go. I hate the content. Content king in it, the house. It never ends. It I never ends. I put it all up, and I'm like, shit, I got to get something else. It's a, it's an IV drip, and if that drip stops, boop, your career, beep, flatline, baby. Oh, it's over. <laughs> I just, I can't, I can't handle it. You, I, I can't guess either. You got to just get someone to do it constantly. Is that right? Yeah. Someone has to come up with the shit. And it's, uh, I, I heard Tim Dill on a podcast. He made a great point. They were like, what's up with the celebrity? Celebrities and the posts about Ukraine and the, the Imagine videos and the black and white. And he's like, it's just part of Hollywood now. That's just part of it now. Right. The way it used to be part of it to have to go work out or, I don't know, do ayahuasca in the, in, uh, what's that place called where the people go? The park? Amazon. No, the park there. The jungle. There. Now, oh, Joshua Tree. Joshua Tree. Yes. Thank you. I knew it was a guy's name. But, yeah, you got to go do all that. Now part of it is going, I love uh, Zelensky and Ukraine is gay and all this stuff. Yeah, you got to say it or you're like, why aren't you saying it? Silence is violence. Yeah. Which is, you know, not what that means, but whatever. <laughs> that's how it goes. But that's why I envy these Mulaney types who just, or Jezelneck or whoever, they just rock, Chris Rock. They got in early. Right. So they go, oh, yeah, I'm already famous. I don't have to do that shit. Right. That's not bad. Must be nice. What are you looking at over there? I got some notes. I got some stories. Hit I got me some with stuff. a story. Put it right in my ass. See if I tinkle. Well, I got. Uh, well, let me ask you this: Have you ever had this happen? Please. This is. Uh, this is. I do this. On, I did this on stage last night. It did okay. All right. I can't tell though. It might be sexual harassment. Please. Not sure. Let me just tell you, you. You give me a little info. All right. I used to work in HR. Has this ever happened to you? Hit me. I'm in Aruba at the hotel, the Holiday Inn. It used to be at the Marriott. Now it's at the Holiday Ooh, Inn. Ooh, that's a downgrade, huh? It's a downgrade, but Holiday Inn is also the first hotel built in Aruba, so it's better location. Okay. It's a nicer part of the beach. Okay. And it's closer to town. Like I, for me, I can walk right across the street. I'm at Starbucks. So it's Ooh. a better location. Okay. Starbucks Central. And it's a better room. The venue's better. Wow, all not, right. Not the hotel room. Ah. The showroom is better. Okay, okay. The hotel room is shit. Not shit, but not as good. Got it. So anyways, we're there. I'm having sex with my wife, intercourse, missionary. That's that's fine. That's allowed. Fun. Then the phone rings. Oh, that's bad. Now, I don't like a flight attendant in my... No, no. What, what's it called? The fucking people... Stewardess? No, no. The hotel lady. The, the cleaning lady. Chambermaid. Chambermaid. <laughs> Sorry, I'm from 1901. Uh, the, what is The cleaning that? woman. The, the, the housekeeping. The housekeeper. There it is. I don't like the housekeeper in... Esmeralda. In my house. Sure. In my room. Yes. So I have the do not disturb up there. There you go. Then they call you. 
I got the do not disturb, so they call. They go, hey, you had the do not disturb, so we thought we'd call. This is literally disturbing. I mean, you're disturbing me. Yes. But so I'm, you not to do. I'm having intercourse, so I got a rock hard uh, dildo on, sure. strapped on, inside my wife. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Then the phone rings, and I don't want it to keep ringing because it's distracting. So I answer, I go, hello. And she goes, hello, it's uh, the cleaning lady at the Dr. Sturb sign on there. And I go, this is kind of hot. I've never talked oh. to a woman while being inside. Of the it's almost like a threesome. I love it. Have you had this? No. I mean, most people go fucking phone. They slap it off the wall because you're all you're in the moment, the throes of passion. Sure. So you go, ah, the phone. And she goes, don't get it. Don't get it. You go, ah, oh, it might be my dad. It'll help me stay hard. But yeah, that's interesting. So I talked to her and she's like, do you need a cleaning? And I wanted to say, well, it's, it's getting awfully dirty up here. I can tell you that. You that's got that fun. right. And she said, you need towels. And I'm like, if you stay on the line, I'll need a towel. Yeah, and bring some lotion, too, and a sandwich. But I tried to really keep her on the line, but I, that might be sexually harassment. I don't know. Possibly, but I think you're all right. I think Esmeralda's probably walked in on a few uh, 69s in her day, so I think you're all right. Exactly, but it felt like a threesome. It was kind of hot, and I hung up, and Sarah was like, that was kind of hot. Whoa. Because I'm talking sure. to a woman you know, on the while I'm inside, and I was giving a couple thrusts, too. I was like, nah, we're good. It was all, The whole thing was like 12 seconds. I love it. Well, that's all the I last anyway. I, mean. yeah. I, I think what you got to do next time, to, for it to be an official threesome, you got to go speaker. Ah, uh, because this is now you're uh, you're having a one sided and Sarah's missing out. Right. She's got to get in on it. And the only way you can't be passing the phone, you know, <laughs> so I think you got to go. Boop, and Esmeralda goes, hey, hello, hello, hi, si, senor, or whatever. Well, that's not bad, but I, I do think we were close enough because it was missionary that she could probably hear a little bit. She could hear like little Charlie Brown's mom. Exactly. I always liked her calves. Oh, yeah. She mm. had some thick socks. She was almost kind of lesbian-y. <laughs> I know I say this a lot, but I think we might have talked about this before. I don't know about that. I think years ago. Charlie Brown's mom's calves is pretty specific. I know, but I think we touched on it. <laughs> All right, touched. I'm telling you. I'm touched. But anyways, I had a little uh, threesome there in the hotel. It I was love fun. It. it was very exciting. And that's a great bit. I love that. It's a killer bit idea. I know, but everyone that's going to come see me has now heard it. And they're like this. Yeah, we remember. They like that. They go, I heard, you, I heard it there first. I was in on the ground floor. I know that bit. Yeah, that's not bad, I guess. That's not bad. Hey, hey, folks. Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Lucy. If you're looking for nicotine gum lozenges or pouches to use nicotine to relax, focus, or just unwind after a long day, there's only one stop you should make, and that's to Lucy. Love Lucy. It tastes good. It feels good. It's a nice little kick right to the system. Get on it, folks. They got great flavors, too. You got to check it out. I like the uh, the cinnamon. If you've been looking for an alternative to smoking, why not switch to nicotine product that you can feel good about? If you enjoy using nicotine, you should definitely check out Lucy's products at lucy.co. That's L-U-C-Y dot C-O. And use promo code TUESDAYS at checkout. Also, you got to read the disclaimer. You know the legal mumbo jumbo warning this product contains nicotine. Nicotine is an addictive chemical, but you already knew that. Remember, if you're interested in a better way to use nicotine, visit lucy.co and be sure to use that promo code Tuesdays. Tuesdays with Stories is also, of course, brought to you by Sheath Underwear. Underwear check if those tighties ain't so whitey anymore it's time to upgrade the sheath here they are folks i got them on oh. giving myself a little front wedgie show them me too there it is hey, the there they are there's the shield <laughs> love the shield I michael checklist yes u.s army soldier and tuesday robert Patton knew there had to be a better way to keep his dick from sticking with his leg so that's how Sheath was born. They're comfy and cool. Sheath comes in so many different patterns, patterns, if you will. Mm -hmm. You can have a pair ready for any occasion, wedding, bachelor party, ski trip, monkey business. I, don't know, I couldn't think of any other things. You can all wear sheath underwear. If you're not mm. wearing sheath, and you're not a true Tuesday at this point. I mean, we've been advertising for them for six months. I mean, six years, whatever it is. This is a bad read, but I know Robert will forgive me. He's a good man. I know him personally. They didn't leave out the ladies either, by the way. The comfort you guys know for your ball, Sheath has applied to boobs with their sports bra. Ooh. Right now. Do it right now. Go to sheathunderwear.com and order with promo code TUESGAYS. 
to get 20% off your first order and she's 100% money back guarantee mm. that sheathunderwear.com promo code Tuesdays. Get sheath underwear and let them support your balls. What more can I say? We're both wearing them every time we record. Great. Get them today. Promotion. I go black so you can't see the skids. Mm-hmm. <laughs> back to the show. Yeehaw. I got a bunch of Aruba. Please. I don't know if you want to. No, because I, I only got one honker. Okay. Well, I got a bunch of stuff here. Uh, so in Aruba with Tony V. I think I talked about it last week. Tony Woods was supposed to be there. Nah. Which I love Tony Woods, but I don't know him that much. And he's more of a, he drinks, he parties. I don't think he ever remembers me. Yeah. And he's a hard guy to get to know. He doesn't open up. He's not a, he's not a hang. Right. And now Tony V, old Boston legend I've known for 22 years, and you just he's someone I just have so much reverence for. Yeah, he's a killer. And he was in the movie I made, 4th of July, writer, star, executive producer. Out in theaters soon. Coming to theaters. Uh, so he's in the movie, and we got to hang all summer. Not all summer, but for a couple of weeks. And it was great, and he smoked cigars, I smoked cigars. He's like a dad, this guy. Yes, yes, so, Father Fig. So that was great. And it's me... Tony and Aruba Ray, and every day we meet at the Palapa, which huh? is like the big uh, Palapa. Palapa. That's the uh, Palapagas. It's like, it's like a um, you know with the hay. Oh, the hay! <laughs> it's like a hut. A hut. Yes, a pizza, hut. pizza hut, sunglass hut. Well, it's called a Palapa. Mud hut. Got it. Mud hutty. So I'd go down there every day. We were Palapa thirty-seven at the Holiday Inn, Ooh. and Tony goes down there early, and we had a great. Uh, what's that called? Rhythm, uh, banter? No, no, no. When you the routine, ah, uh-huh. a great routine. A routine. So I would wake up. I'd go to Starbucks, get Sarah her coffee. I get my tea. Then I'd I'd get some cigars. Go upstairs, do my meditation. Wake her up. Would go down down there to the Palapa. Tony's already there. He's reading. And so we'd sit down there, go swim, and we had one of these balls that bounces on the surface of the water. Have you seen those? No, never heard of a ball bounce. It's amazing. What you got to get Jesus? one. Are you floating a ball? Fanny, if you're listening, get us a ball bounce sponsorship. Please, a BBS. It's a ball like this big, a little smaller than a baseball, but somehow it floats and bounces. You just ah. throw it. I'm going to get one for this Tampa escapade. Yeah, please. Lay it on me. You go. You, you can skim it so it shoots across the water, or you can throw it like halfway and it'll do a one hop. What? It's unbelievable. Wait, it comes back? No, it, I throw it to you. Oh, I see. I see. But you can go 50 feet down, and I can go, whoosh, and it goes, whoosh, 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 what? And then it'll hit the wave and bounce. It's really fun. I got to see this palapa ball. It's really something. At one point, there was this old asshole with like a backwards fluorescent hat. You know the uh, <laughs> neon? These oh, guys yeah. wearing the neon. Hate neon. Anything neon is not for me. Neon, neon. Except for the sign is good. I like a neon sign or a beer sign, a bar sign, but a neon outfit. <laughs> well, this guy, he's 150, and <laughs> it's right. these people, well, they don't care about the sun. And I know we're not big sunblock guys, whatever. Nah. But these are the guys that they don't care about sunblock, but they spend 17 hours a day in the sun. Oh, yeah. They're just brown. They're, they're like an old catcher's mitt. They look like a baked... <laughs> cobbler yeah like the top of their head is a cobbler and then they're like 150 so the skin is just like dripping off brown yikes and so tony and i are throwing the ball having a good time and the guy goes uh, pardon me excuse me he's like 40 feet away pardon me mm. be real careful with the ball my wife has already been hit once oh with the ball. there's one at every party and and his wife is floating he's like pulling his like decrepit, shitty, dead wife. It's like Weekend at Bernie's. Oh, geez, Bernie Sanders. <laughs> She's all like, whoa, health insurance. Yeah. And it's so hard because the, the moments in life when you know you could beat the person up, yes. you want to really be a bully. Yes, it's power is corrupting. Yes, I want to be like, why don't you blow me, you old asshole? You got six weeks left. We're not even anywhere near you. I hope your wife dies from a beach ball in the yeah. face. Yeah, take your knee on, shove it up your pee hole. And we were nowhere near him. Anyways. Was she hit? She was hit by somebody else. Uh, we weren't even involved. How many of these palapa balls you got out there? <laughs> this was not us. It okay. was someone else with a beach ball. A beach ball. I think. What is it, a rock show? So anyways, fuck that guy. Yes. So we're throwing the ball every morning. We go in, we swim, we throw the ball, we come out, we smoke a cigar on the beach. It was beautiful. I love it. Love a routine. Great Canadian dish. Maybe we'll get some Cubans for the big bachelor Ooh, party. Ooh, I love a Cube. We'll get some Cubans and some hookers. It'll be a great time. <laughs> Hell yeah. Male, preferably. 
But yeah, good stuff, good times. How about this? What well, should I lay my honker down? Actually, I, I got a little one. I'll throw at you. Now throw me a little because I got some. I got a whole bunch of shit. All right, I don't know if I'm supposed to say this, but oh uh, boy, that's always good stuff. Well. Ah, maybe oh, it's a bad geez. idea. Basically, uh, somebody I know is uh, doing a big awards show. Uh huh. So I've been writing a couple of zingers for that person. <laughs> I think they're gonna crack this uh, one. Ah, <laughs> you know, you throw out zingers. That's how you do. Uh, okay. I, threw, I used to throw Gervais a couple zingers back uh-huh. in the day, back when he was banging, baby. And uh, hey, Ricky. yeah, now I throw in uh, this cat a couple of yuck 'em ups, and that they. person they showed up to the cellar unbeknownst to myself, I was on stage. One of those things where I'm on stage, and I'm like, all right, that's about eight minutes. All right, I've done 16. Okay, now I'm at 18. Oh, boy. Now I'm at 19, 20, 21. You're kind of like, I'm doing old shit here. I'm doing OJ jokes and Reaganomics and, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton stuff. And finally, I get the light, and the, the guy, the host, walks up, and he goes, sorry, big drop in. I had to keep you on. I was like, oh, okay. So they show up. Place goes ape shit. <laughs> You know, <laughs> running the Oscar jokes and uh, killing, by the way, killing. And I go, I wonder if I, one of mine will get in there. They tell my joke. <laughs> Big bomb. It wasn't just a bomb. It got like a, oh, jeez. Oh, and you're like, oh, yeah, that's right. I'm not a TV writer. Right. And I, I, I stand by the joke. I think it's a solid joke, but. It's so much darker than right. the rest. It sticks and out. It sticks out, and uh, the, they were like, all right, that went great, except for that <laughs> one that uh, Mark wrote, and that got a big laugh, and I was standing in the wings. But very exciting. That's very exciting. It's fun, and, and you kind of have that Lenny Bruce thing of like, but let me tell it. Yes, and maybe I will. But I might say a big groan, not necessarily a bomb. It's a reaction. That's what my friends said, the a, same thing. A bomb is, is nothing. Yeah, and when you think about it, the groan, Negroni, the groan is the one you'll probably remember in the set. Right. Because it, it Attell always said, uh, if you get a groan, it means you're on to something. Right. You know? And then Jeselnik had the famous line of, uh, a groan is a laugh, but for pussies. Oh, that's a, that's great a fun line. line. Great line. He's oh. got a couple uh, hot ones. Fun guy. Good nice show. guy. I like that guy. Yeah. So that was it, but it was a fun little moment, and the, the weight of it hit me like, oh my God, I could get a joke on the Oscars. Like... I, you know, you think, ah, oh, here's some jokes, I'm writing jokes, whatever. Well, when you sit back and really go, I've been watching these since I was uh, two, you know, and now I could get a joke on. It's like that Seinfeld thing. Who knew life could be so long right. that you could get this to happen? Know this rapist. <laughs> He's talking about meeting Cosby. Right, right. Now, will you get a basket? Because DePaulo wrote for Rock, and he got a big basket. had a trip in it what? and DVD. He got a DVD of everything. There was like two tickets to, you know, Paradise. I love a basket. And uh, it's a whole thing. They give you, if you work on the Austin, they give you a big apple pie basket. Well, I'm not in a basket's good show, but I'm not in the uh, the writer's room. I think I'm just, uh, what do you call contributing. Ah. I'm a sideways uh, guy. Here you go, sister. Maybe you get a little basket. I'll take a little basket. Like an Easter egg. Whatever you got, I'll take any kind of bread basket, whatever it is. Did you guys do Easter with the basket and the hiding the shit? As a kid, we did, and it was some of the best memories of my life. Oh, wow. We'd do a big crawfish boil in Slidell, Louisiana. My grandfather would have that whole big old pot churning with crawdads, and uh, my mom would hide the uh, the eggs, and me and my cousins would run around and look for it, and it was just good, wholesome fun. You find the eggs, you wrestle in the grass, the sun is shining, eat crawfish, they're drinking high life and listening to music. It was a great time. Yeah, that was fun. I remember my aunt would like put a DVD in the basket and you'd get like a what? movie or something like that. It was pretty fun. Remember that weird green fuzzy grass? Yeah, that's grass? what I was thinking about. Yes, I love I the like grass. I that stuff. I would throw it. Yes. Kneel to grass. Tyson. Chicken. Great fighter. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Pigeons. Okay, so one of the days, we're sitting at the Palapa. Me and Tony, ah, the Palapa. The Palapa, me, Tony, Aruba Ray, and Sarah, and they got this, I'm sure you've seen it, it's like a big red mattress they attach to a speedboat. Oh, yeah. And they pull it. I love that thing. And they're sitting, and you see limbs going like this everywhere. I love the red, it's like a big piece of baloney in the ocean. And I go, we gotta get the mattress, let's get the couch thing. Get the couch. And everyone goes, well, and you know me, I'm a, I'm a starter, I like to get it started. Oh, yeah, maybe too much starting. Well, everyone's like, this. well, I don't know, we're all, you know, Tony. 68, yeah. Ruba Ray's 58, Sarah's 48, sure. I'm 38, so 
I go, come on, let's just do it, whatever. And yeah. they go, well, maybe tomorrow. It's late, ah, whatever. Tomorrow. And it's, they go, it only goes till 5. Anyway, it's like 5.30. Sun's starting to set. All right. Well, watch and out I, with the neon guy, too. Neon. Uh, oh, the guy. Yeah, I, yeah, I hate the guy. I'm so mad about the neon. I was thinking Dodge Neon, my old car. Ah, yes. Not a great vehicle. That was fun. 2002. Ah, all right. Shit the bed. You've been in it. Yeah, yeah. Shit the bed. You might have driven it, probably. I think I have. A couple of drunk nights after a few yoo-hoos, I took that thing out for the town. <laughs> but, uh, it's a fine product. <laughs> but uh, So Ooh. I go, let me just look right into it. So they're in the, the ocean playing with the ball, and I run over to Frank's Fun Shack or whatever, and it's a bunch of like hot, spicy Latinos. You ever oh, have moments boy. where you're like, nah, I think I am gay. Oh, yeah, I've had that today, twice. It's <laughs> just three... Brown guys, yeah. tiny booty shorts, uh, perfect abs, under a giant palapa. Yeah. And uh, I got a, my palapa is straight up in the air for these guys. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah, they always got good hair and a weird necklace sitting on their pecs. Woo, I want to blow them. And they're so cool. I know, they're hip. And every once in a while, the shorts come down and you see like the tan ah, line. It's like white and brown. Come on, I'm eating here. That white and brown, it, it reminds me of my underwear as a kid. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my little Haynes. Sure, sure, Andy Haynes. And they know. <laughs> and they new special. That's Check right. It Check it out. It's uh, the, called the, the coward the, the of LA Cowboy. County. Yeah, something. Something. It's fun. He's a funny cat. Dry, Very funny. Rosebud's husband. Yeah, that's how he's known now. You got that right. But so I walk out, and they know how to just play right into my hand. They're like, "Hey, what's up, uh, homie or poppy? Oh, hey, poppy." Oh, oh, you're speaking my language, <laughs> not, not literally. <laughs> Seriously, I'm blushing. <laughs> you got that right. And I go, "Hey, I'm just wondering. I got some old assholes out in the water. We want to take the couch out. Can you take us on the inflatable couch?" And then they point. They're like, "It's twenty dollars a man, and they're ready for you right over there." I turn, and the boat. You know, it's so sandy there. You don't have to oh. anchor up or anything. They just drive right up onto the beach. They b beach that thing. Love it. And there's two hotter guys on the boat. Uh, where does it end? You can't bring your wife around. She'll get wet. I pay them to fuck her. I mean, it's two Benicio Del Toros oh. over there. And they're like sitting all like they got the foot up on the thing. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm wet. And they just go like this. <laughs> and I'm like, I got to do it. So I had 80 on me. I go, here's 80. Put us down for four. I'll be right back. Uh-oh. So now I'm like a kid. I jog back over. It's hard to jog in the sand. You got that right. I've seen Baywatch. I'm jogging past everybody. Yasmin, Bleeth. I go, guys, we got the couch. Come on. And you can tell they were like, all right, I guess we're doing the couch. It is a, it is a thing. I mean, you're going to get really sprayed out there. You're going to get a mouthful of jizz. It's a whole <laughs> rigmarole. Well, all that stuff happens, but... I just feel like in life, I'm like, it's just the thing. If you just do it. You got to get over the hump. And once you're over the hump, that's what life's about. And they all kind of go, all right. So then we trudge through the waist. And I'm jogging. I'm like, they're coming. I swear to God. Because I still have that thing as a kid. I'm like, don't leave without us. I swear to God. I got three people coming. Yeah. I already paid. So we shed down our gear. We give them our phone, our glasses, the whole thing. We get on. And it's me. I'm on the outside. Then Sarah. Then Ray. Then Tony. And we go out. We go, just zip us around. I go, give us the heat. Really bring it. And we go out. And I'll tell you, it was the most fun I've ever had in my oh, life. Oh, that's lunch. They're zipping and zapping, he's, and he's doing these things. So we fall, come out of the wake. We go, here we go. And, and I like to yell crazy shit during sure. it. I'm going, my sister likes me, uh, whatever. My yeah. sister's got pretty <laughs> nipples. And then yeah. Tony's dying. Ray's giggling like a girl. And then Sarah goes, Joe's gay. And then that gets a big laugh. And I go, oh, I'm that's like, a good wife. every time we hit a wave, I'm like, I've never made Sarah come. And everyone's dying. <laughs> I love it. I go, I find Asians off putting. Hey. <laughs> Everyone's dying. <laughs> Pudding pop. Yeah, it was so fun and uh, just the best. And our ankles are going flying. Then the boat runs out of gas. Come on. Runs out of gas. So we stop. We're just floating. And they had gas on board. Ah, these gas prices are no joke. But he go, the guy goes, we got to fill up on gas, which was actually nice because we got a break. We just sat out there floating. Ah, the water's beautiful. There you go. Fills it up. And I go, okay, see if you can dump it. And they're going, no, don't say that. I'm like, it's fine. I'm, I'm doing this thing in the back. I love this thing. Tony's cranking it up. We're hitting waves, wakes, Woo! everything, bouncing. And, and there's moments where it gets scary because you're like, if we crash, we're all going to hit each other. Yeah, clunk heads like Mo. Exactly. So we go in. Just a beautiful time, and everyone was like, that was awesome. We're high-fiving. I love it. Great fun. There's nothing like that. The sun is setting. You're in the water. You, you, it's a bitch to get the, the phone in the bag. I hate mm -hmm. I hate all the steps, but once you're out there, it is clean living. Exactly. That's what we got to do some of that action in uh, down, down in Tampa. You got that right. 
bachelor this is party. Be big. 2022, baby. Should we start plugging the date? Well, we'll get it official. Oh, we'll yeah, get it official first. It's going to be something. You know what's great about the couch gig, too? That fluffy whatever when they, they pull you around? They're having fun. The yes. driver's also like, whoa, look at these fucking retards. Yes. Ah, you know, and it's great. And other ones, you know, parasailing, the guy's doing his nails. He's bored out of your, his mind while you're up there jerking off. But right. the couch one, he's into it, too, because he's like, I'm going to get these guys off of here. Love the couch. Good couch. Recommend the couch. 20 bucks a person. Not bad. Not bad. You got a tip, though. No, we gave a nice tip. We gave yeah. an extra 20. So then it's, you know, 25 per, a person. All right. Hey, that's a hell of a, a hell of a, a purse for a great night. And a nice tip, 25% tip to ride your boat along. You got that right. Good for them. And way to keep the gas on the boat there, hombre. That was a smart move. Got to do it. Yeah. So then, I got more if you want more. Put it in my ass. Time. All right, here, having sex cleaning lady. Ooh, we heard that one. Talked about Xander Bogarts. All right, let me get to the... Uh... <laughs> so then... Nighttime, Tony and Aruba Ray, they're big gamblers. And I gamble a, a fair amount here, but yeah. losing money just kills me. It hurts, especially that way. You could have bought a, a Snickers bar. Exactly. And I, I'll throw money around like an idiot. I get Uber Eats twice a day. I spend 70 bucks a day on food. I'm taking Ubers everywhere because I'm afraid of the subway. But at least you're getting something. Exactly. You're getting a ride. You're getting a meal. The gambling is just <laughs> gone. I hate losing money. It pains me. You know what it is, too? I hate losing I'm a competitive guy. Uh-huh. So it's also like, it's not just you're losing money, you're getting beat. Yeah. You're being beaten. Yeah, in front of your face by some Asian lady from Taiwan. It's just brutal. Yes. So they're going, I, they're going we're going to go play poker tonight. And I've never played poker at a casino. You ever play poker at a casino? Too, too stressful. I do a little blackjack, I'll do a little roulette, maybe be in the back with the craps going, I don't know what that means, but here you go, here's another 20. Right. But the poker, I mean, that's like a skill. Right. I don't so, have it. I've been playing poker my whole life. Never played at a casino. So we go over there. There's the one table, the serious table. Uh, it's a bunch of guys in sweatpants, sunglasses, and bad haircuts. Exactly. Thousands of dollars being exchanged. And it's no limit, and you buy in for whatever you want. Mm. So it's it's $2, $5 blinds, but no limit. Okay. So someone can go, i bet 100 bucks. Okay. So we all buy it. We start our own table. Me, Ray, Tony, and other people join in. Well, now you're taking money from your chums. Exactly. So it's a little it's a little trick, but there's like nine guys at the table. All right. And that's what you play if you're playing at your house. True, true. You have the friends over to play poker. That's what goes on. Now, what do you do? You give the house a, uh, a kickback? How's that work? What, what are they getting out of this? Drinks? How do they make giving money? Giving drinks away. Maybe there's an, an initiation fee or whatever. Like, here's... You got to pay to play? No, we didn't do that. Huh. I guess they're just happy that you're there. But I don't know what their cut is. Yeah, because they're giving away drinks now. They're giving away drinks, but they got you in the casino, too. True, true. You and might buy a meal. You get, yeah, you want to get that meal. Yeah, swordfish. But yeah, no, you win all the pot back. Unless he's taking a percentage that of the pot. That must be a percentage. No, I don't think so. All right. Well, we'll figure that out some other yeah, time. they got a light bill over here, you know? But I think it's also just one aspect of the casino, because blackjack, they're taking you down. Roulette, they're really taking you. Crap. Slots is where they're really making money. They don't slot shame. Um, so anyways, I go in there a little nervous, but you know I've been playing my whole life. So we got a whole big table, and I got to tell you, I cleaned up, Get Mark. out of town. It's the coolest I've ever felt in my Woo! life. I won 350 bucks. Whoa! Never lost a hand. Get the hell out of town. I mean, I muck everything. I'm a mucker. I just muck, muck, Lizzie, muck. Throw it out. I get out. I don't play anything. I play. Good. I get rid of every hand. And I had a full house at one point. It was me and this big fat guy down the end. And I had two pair. He had better two pair. I got the full house on the river. Oh! It was classic. Come on. I and can't I, take it. I go, I got tens full of jacks, you fat son of a a bitch. Wow. Like, oh my god, and I'm taking it down. Oh, nothing better than the scoop. Big stack, stack oh. of money. And you could tell everybody wanted a piece of me, but I wouldn't let them have it. I kept I kept mucking. I'm like, I don't want that. I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. Never lost a hand. It was oh so thrilling. God. Unreal. Did they get mad at you? Because sometimes you win a lot and they start getting a little chippy. Well, you could feel it. The, the vibe started to change, and that's when I got out. All of a sudden, a new guy came in. And it was like raise a hundred. Oh, it was like that kind of stuff yeah. where people start bullying, and you I go, whale. I don't like the vibe anymore. Bad I like, vibe. I like five bucks. I bet fifteen. I bet twenty. Okay, great. 
And uh, so I, it started to get awkward. And then there's this guy who's a fucking asshole everybody hates that I had heard about. And ah. He showed up and so everyone was like, let's get out of here. But felt like a million bucks. Leave it up 350 Yeah, you got to pull it. And then they get mad at you for pulling out. They go, you go, I'm, I'm cashing out. They go, come on, because they want your money. Well, what happened was a chair opened up at the big table. Uh-oh. And by rule, whoever signed up first for the second table has to go to that table. Ooh. And it was a Ruby Ray. Ooh. So he left, and he got replaced by an asshole. So Tony goes, oh, you know what? I'm out. And I went, I, I'm just here to hang with my buddy. So I'm right, leaving. Right. And this guy was mad. He's like, now this table's ruined. And it was like, oh, shut you up. You see? And then they get mad at you for mucking. But good for you for hanging in there, because you got to muck. You're a mucker fucker. I'm out. Yeah. But they, they always want you to play every hand. They're like, no, no, no. I'm mucking. I fold. I muck. I suck. My father's dick. I'm uh, a cuck. So then, last story that I'm out. Nobody cares about a gambling story, but... Ah, it's a great story. I was on the edge of my tits. So the very last night... Now, I've won 350 playing poker. That'll so, cover the uh, the couch. So I don't want to leave. I want to leave up. You so I don't right. gamble for like two days. But then the last night, Ray's uh-uh. like, come on, let's let's go gamble. So I go, all right. But I'm, I'm not gambling more than... Th- I'm gambling 300 bucks. That way, worst case scenario, I leave up 50 bucks. You got that right. So I go to the blackjack table. Ray's late. He's in traffic. Play a little blackjack. Sarah plays. She gets wiped out right away. I'm up 300 in blackjack. Uh, who are you? Lady Liberty? 300, baby. Holy hell. Big apple pie. Stack of chips. Lady Luck. Sorry. New dealer comes in, and she's a snarky lady. I lose about 20 hands in a row. Hey. Just watch it go. Bloop, 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 just, ah, it's it like all the goes. Twin Towers. Down. Exactly. So finally I go, hey, I'm out. I lose about 200. So now I'm up 150 on the trip. Okay, okay. Still still up. So Ray scoops us up. We go down to the Marriott. We got to go down there to pick up something. Doesn't matter what. Now here's what's tough is you've already lost a nice chunk of change. He just got there, so he's ready to roll. But you're like, I'm already out. And when he picks me up, now he does real gambling. When he picks me up, he goes, I got to tell you something. I just won 7,000. I go, 7,000? I go, come on. He pulls it out like a stat. He looks like fucking... Uh, Jimmy Conway. He's yeah. got a stack this big of bills. Woo-wee. And I go, well, I'm not gambling anymore. He goes, I'll float you 100. You can gamble with my 100. All right. Anything you win, you get, if you win, you give me back the 100. I go, all right, all right. Okay, okay. So I love Let It Ride. He's never played. He doesn't know Let It Ride. So What's Let It Ride? Let It Ride, you get three cards, and you have three bets out there. But you only have to bet oh, one. Okay. So then there's two Community cards that are part of your hand, so uh-huh. you can keep. Or it's it's hard to explain without it there. I, I it's a trust fun you. game. Okay, sounds fun. Five let card it ride. poker game, but you're not playing against the other players. Gotcha. So we sit down and let it ride. First hand, full house. Oh, I win 110 bucks. Oh. All right, so now you're already up 10. So no, I win 100. I win 110. So immediately, I have 100 in front of me that he gave me. The- I win 110. Oh, oh, so I slide him back his hundred. Oh. That's money, baby. I'm back up 110. Who are you, uh, horseshoe boy? It's crazy. So he gets wiped out at Let It Ride. I end up giving a little back. I think I'm up 75. And I go, okay, I'm leaving. It's 1 in the morning. We got to fly out tomorrow. Good for you. Now, Ray's a maniac. He's an addict. He goes... Let's put some on the roulette wheel. Ah, Come on. He goes, I'm going to put one spin. This is the classic story every time. So I go, all right, one spin. Sarah's fed up. She just throws some cheese at me. She sits down. She looks at her phone. I put down, I put 10 bucks on the table. Ah. I got 34 is my lucky number. Paul Pierce, David Ortiz, my sister's asshole, my waist size. I put 34. It comes up 34. Oh. I hit 150 bucks. Oh, and I go, okay, Lord. I'm out of here. And he goes, no, you got to leave a couple chips on 34 for the next spin just in case it comes up again. The addict. So I go, I leave a couple on 34, and I go, well, I'm betting four bucks. I might as well put in another six bucks, the minimum. Ah, you're killing me here. I'm watching it dwindle. So I put it on a couple numbers, including 17, Sarah's birthday. It hits 17. Get the fuck out He's of here. He's got tits. 50 bucks on 17. So I win like 70 bucks. He wins like 700 bucks. All right, pull out. Pull and we out. go, oh my God. I go, let's get out of here. This is crazy. He goes, crazy. no, if you win, you got to leave it on the number. Oh, these rules. I hate the rules. So he leaves it on the number. I leave it on the number. I go, okay, this is the last bit. I go, Sarah, last spin. 17 again. All right. I, I got to get out of here. I swear to God. Three spins in a row. I won. Two 17s. 
I'm a, and he's winning. He's betting like so much more than me. So he's up like four grand. I'm up uh, a few hundred. Then he goes, you can't lo- you can't leave on a win. You have to leave it on there. So I go back to thirty four. I never don't bet on thirty four. It comes up thirty four. All right, what are four we doing? Four spins here? in Come a row. On. I, don't I believe swear it. to God, I don't believe it. The mugs are over. The cup is over. The bottle's shaky. Now get out of there. Thirty four. I win four spins in a row. I have a stack of chips. He's up. I swear to God, he's up like twelve thousand dollars. It's, it's wow. fucking. Oh. Is. We both won four spins in a row. We're screaming. Holy hell, this is insane. Now, can you leave? So finally, he goes, well, you got to leave it on there. You leave it on there. So I leave. All of these are $10 bets. So what are you up now? I'm up a few hundred. Okay. He's up thousands of dollars. Wow. So I go, all right, one more spin. If I lose, I'm out no matter what. Yeah. One more spin. I lose 10 bucks. I go, okay, I'm out. He goes, okay, fine. Good. So we leave. I got a big old stack of chips. This is the last night. I'm leaving at like 10 a.m. Oh, at 1.30 wow. a.m. I won like 500 bucks. Oh, my God. You left on a high. It was crazy. I, I left up 750. Holy shit. This is incredible. Good for you. It never goes that way. Wild. You beat the system. Beat the system. Did you have the Come guzzler in the suit go, hey, sir, we like the way you play out there. Why don't you come stay in the main suite and we'll get you a couple of hooahs. Well, the hard thing was I was gambling next to Ray, who's literally betting like 20 times more than me. Yeah. So he gets all the treatment. I see. They're all like, I, I'm yelling like a girl. And they're like, what'd you win? I'm like, 200 bucks. Right. right. So it was <laughs> like not as exciting as, uh, you know, oh, this old trick. Yeah, it still holds up. Right? That's good stuff. Put that on reels. Make yes. a reel. You got to have reels content. <laughs> oh, Uh-oh, man. Sam Reel. The reels deals. Let's but yeah, this is. good this for you. Good. Hey, hey, Tuesdays with Stories is thrilled to welcome our new sponsor, Fanimal. Fanimal. I love live events, but I hate buying tickets. The hidden fees, they suck, and coordinating with friends is a nightmare. I always end up fronting a bunch of money, then chasing down the friends to get reimbursed, and if they flake, I'm stuck with the whole gosh darn bill. But then I discovered Fanimal. Fanimal has tickets to everything, and there's no fees. The price you see is the price you pay. I love that. Not only are prices transparent, but they're almost always lower than anywhere close I look, and for any hot ticket like Coachella, Laker game, Dave Chappelle, Fanimal is always the cheapest option. Nobody goes to live events alone, so why buy the tickets alone? Fanimal's patented group purchase makes it easy. First, you set a minimum size for your group and choose the number of tickets you want to pay for yourself. Then you invite your pals. When the minimum size is met, everyone gets charged and receives their ticket. If the minimum size isn't reached in time, nobody gets charged. I love it. You don't commit until your friends commit. Oh, yeah, and Fanimal has amazing customer service. Don't take my word for it. Check out their hundreds of five-star reviews. The next time you need tickets, go to Fanimal.com and sign up with Tuesdays for $20 of credit toward your first purchase. Check out Fanimal and experience more. Support the show and get $20 off your first purchase. Tuesdays is the code, Fanimal.com. Thank you. Folks, right now, here's an ad for our own stuff, which I feel like we don't do enough. The merch store is rocking and Ooh, rolling. You, you got can that find right. the link in the description of the episode. It's TuesdaysWithStories.BigCartel.com. Look at these mugs. Queef yes. to teach his own is sticking up my ass. Farts, that lunch, hit him up, Chipotle. There's yes. so many things in here. Yeah, it's and all it's pipes. a sizable mug, and it's what's known as a four-finger mug. Oh, I like that. You can get all four fingers in there, so you can really drink some heavy shit. Put yeah. In, uh, Take a dump in there, drink tea, drink your beer. It's a good-looking mug. My ex was a four-finger mug, and uh, the link is in the description on the screen right now. Mug Costanza. Yes. Go down there, join the Patreon, and get some merch. Show up, show up to the shows wearing the merch. Bring the mug. Throw it at me if I, uh, you know, suck. Yeah, yeah. This is a, this is your mug shot, folks. There yeah. it is. Huh? There it Beautiful. is. Beautiful. You hear that? Made in China. Yeah, so do that and uh, patreon.com slash whatever the fuck. You can find us. Sign Big up cartel. today. And by the way, a few people have been bringing Chipotle cards again. Bring them back. We love Chipotle. God bless you. Chipotle cards, Starbucks card. I got some cheesecake factories. It's insane. So Ooh-wee. thank you for those. You're welcome to do that if you want. And uh, I don't know. That's it. Back yeah, to the show. Keep queefing. We love you. Tits. All right, let me. Uh, what yeah, are we at? bring us home. Are we here. at two hours and forty-eight minutes, Shelbu. Forty-six. 
Oh, 47. Oh, 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 all right. Plenty, plenty of, of room here. All right. There's I'm going to I'm gonna really milk this uh, this puppy beer. It's going to be hard to follow the 500 winning streak, but here we go, <sighs> Big Papa. And the Bush women. Uh-huh. Okay, so doing this run, La Jolla, skiing, Tampa. I've been gone eight years. I don't know who I am. I don't know where I am. I'm gay. I'm sick. I'm queefing. I get a text at about ah, one in the morning when I'm in uh, Tampa. Okay. And, and I go, uh, who the hell is this? You know, I've got a few cocktails. The show's over. I got my feet up. And I'm like, what's this? It's a guy I haven't talked to in years. Sean Strauss. Throwing that out there. Mm, SS. This guy taught me how to, he taught me how to drive stick. Ah. I put it out there years ago. I bought the I was buying the Beamer and I go, I don't even know how to drive a stick. It's a nineteen seventy three, you know, manual. And this Tuesday hits me up and goes, I don't know if you remember me. We did some shows together, but I can teach you how to drive stick. Come out to Jersey. I'll drive you around in my car. It's a stick. I'm a, I'm a mechanic or whatever the hell. And I go, great. Go out there. Nice guy. He picks me up. We learn stick. We, I took him out to dinner after at the diner. He drives me home. We shake hands. We make out. That's it. Okay. He texts me, this guy. That's a little backstory. He texts me at 1 in the morning and goes, hey, man, I'm I'm half in the bag. I went out to a bachelor party or some kind of thing. He's in a suit. He goes, I'm in Chinatown. I'm looking at your, I'm looking at a big uh, bike with a cover over it. And just a cunt hair of the bike is sticking out. He's like, it looks like your bike. What? And I go, the hog? The hog got stolen. He goes, yeah, yeah. Is this it? He whips the cover off. He takes a photo. And I go, that's it. And I go, what? Are there two scratches on the handlebars? I have a black handlebar with two of these scratches because I fucked it up one time. And he goes, there are. And I go, that's the bike. He goes, give me oh the VIN. Oh, my God. Give me the VIN number just to be sure. So I got to go in my Geico thing. I'm, I'm looking through VIN. I don't know how to do any of this. I take a photo of the VIN. I said, he goes, we got a match. Oh, my God. This Unreal. Is crazy Finn Diesel. You're I, in Tampa? I, I'm in Tampa. He's in Chinatown. Chinatown? I know, Jake. Oh, my God. So I go, what the hell is this? He goes, it's got seven chains on it. It's wrapped up to shit. It's a little beat up. And I, I just want to hug it and go, hey, oh my God. big fat baby, we're going to take you home, you know? He's in danger, though. I know, I know. I said, keep your head on the swivel. He's like, I'm with six guys. We're all a bunch of Jersey mooks. We don't give a shit. Bring it on. And uh, I go, well, what are you going to do? He goes, this is great. I love this kind of shit. My bike got stolen a year ago. I'm still sour about it. I got a chip on my shoulder. Fuck these queefs. We're taking this bike back. He's sour. He's sour, and he's not going to sweeten. So I go, well, hey, man, look, I'll come get it. But I just feel bad. He's like in a suit. He's all dolled up, and he's uh, he's got a, had a couple champagnes in him. But he's like, no, no, this is this is how we're ending the night. He goes and gets a buzzsaw. I don't know where. A buzzsaw? Yes. And he just shows me video. <laughs> he's cutting these chains. The sparks oh flying God. everywhere right in the middle of Mott Street. Oh, my God. It's like a metaphor. I know. For what? I don't know. Cutting the chains to free. Oh, he's yes. He's yes. himself. Slavery. Boot. Uh, Give him the boot. I'm a stud. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, my God. I'm in a hotel. Room. I'm in a Holiday Inn in Tampa. Like, woo. Cut those chains, motherfucker. Let's do this. Holy shit. So, wee, and he's a pro. This guy's like a tool guy. He's a real man. Uh-huh. You know? He's got a he's got a buzz on Chinatown. <laughs> I think he had it in his trunk or something. <laughs> Jesus. So I see there's like eight guys around. He goes, Okay, the bike is free. It looks like there's a couple fuel lines cut. I think you got a flat tire back here. I'm like, it's fine, it's fine. Just keep it safe. Put a blanket over it, rub its back. Oh my and god. And he's like, I know a guy at the sixth precinct. I'm gonna call him. Turns out he calls this guy, the sixth precinct guy, Officer Vinny. I love a cop friend. I know. You gotta have a cop friend. It's huge. So he goes, uh, Vinny is pissed too because there's been a lot of bicycles stolen or mopeds or hogs or whatever, and his got stolen too. He's got an axe to grind. Oh my God. One sour, the other's got an axe to grind. A lot of And axes. a saw to cut with. <laughs> yes, yes. So Vinny goes, I work at the precinct in Chinatown. Walk it over. I'll keep an eye on it. Leave it here as long as you want. Fuck these queefs. And I call, he goes, here's Vinny's number. I call him the next day. I go, hey, Vin, this is Mark, uh, Vin number. I'm the guy with the hog. He's like, yes, it's here. So I'm going to pick it up today. Oh, my God. This I is know. insane. It's insane. You I don't mean, get anything back. This is legendary. Back. Legendary. Every, every show I do on the road, I do a little Q&A. Where's the hog? What happened? It got stolen. Did you get it back? It's stolen. What do you want from me? It's gone. We got it back. We're getting it back today. I hope it's still there. I'm sure it's beat up, but 
It's the principle. What, what if they come back for revenge, though? They're like, here's my bike now, or whatever. Yeah, there's a little... It's scary. Uh, you could be working with the China mob here. I know. I might get squid gamed, but here's the clinker. They stole it from New York Comedy Club on 4th Street. I don't mm. live over there. I live uh, on the other side of town, right. so I'm just going to put it back at my house, and hopefully we get this Brooklyn apartment. Then it'll be safe. I got a backyard there. Right. So I just got to get it and hold on to that cum stain as long as I can and then keep it safe in Brooklyn. I can't believe it. I mean, this is like the Saab, the golf clubs. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I mean, you should have seen these sparks, Jerry. Wah! Going nuts. I was like, man, these friends, Sean Strauss, give him a goog. Check it out. He, I put the whole thing on my stories. Where did he get the buzzsaw? Uh, he's a tool guy. He's a, he's a man's man. He's a, he's a mechanic. He's a carpenter. He's one of these cats. Uh -huh. Yeah, he's a, he's a Tim Allen. The tool man. Yeah, and uh, boy, he went full Al Borland on that thing. And I just got to be, I was in my hotel, woo, and looking at the face video. FaceTiming? Yeah, he's FaceTiming. He's taking pics. It's great. This guy's a hero. I, I got to ride the subway with him. In hero. case I run into trouble, he can buzzsaw these assholes. He's the guy you want. You get why women like these manly men. It's because they can get shit done. He had a blast doing it. He's like, fuck it, we're, we're, we're saving the world. They're not saving the world, but we're, we're, we're taking injustice. We're, God. we're stopping injustice. We're helping people. Fuck the bad guys. Here you go, bicycle. I'd kill to be that guy. I'm the I like, know. I'm the. We're all getting on the couch guy. That's not a bad guy. That's you're, a good guy. You're a party starter. But if the boat guy was like, just kidding, I'm taking you to, you know, Haiti to rape you, yeah. I'd be like, oh no, right. you know, right. I'd like to be that guy. Yeah, like, it'd be some, nice. I could like to be both. The rape buzzsaw? The party starter guy, but also the buzzsaw, right. the dirt bike freak. Cause, I see. Because if I saw it, I'd call a cop and be like, hello, can you help me? Right. You know, I'm gay. I'll, I'll get you on an inflatable couch on the ocean right. if we ever see each other. <laughs> yeah, this, this guy's hands on. He gets you mm. done. I think it's a little Jersey in him. You know, you need. Right. You don't want some Manhattan coos out there. Oh, this is bad. We need to file a paperwork or whatever. He's like a Jersey mook. He's like, let's fucking go. Wow. So good, good news. Getting the hog back. Very exciting. Fuck you guys stealing. And uh, now I feel bad stealing from Hudson News because I'm like, ah. Things were stolen from me. Now I'm stealing, but that's Hudson. Dudes. Well, they're a corporation. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. But so it's just sitting at the precinct? Sitting at the precinct, and it's a little banged up, so I'm going to go. I got a thing to do today at 3. After that, <whistles> heading right down to Chinatown. Dun, 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 dun. Thank you. I almost lost my nose, and I like my nose. I enjoy breathing out of it. <laughs> Nicholson. Yes. Directed by a uh, guy who fucked a kid in the ass. Yeah, but, uh, you know, and Holocaust survivor, you know. Is he? Oh, yeah, his parents died. Oh, but he's all right. Well, Polanski. he wasn't in it. He was there. He was in it? He was there. Whoa. That's the Dan Mintz joke. He won an Academy Award, accused of raping a child, and a Holocaust survivor. I'd be happy with just one of those things. Oh, that's a great joke. <laughs> Man, that Dan Mintz has some pearls. One of the great one of the great joke writers. So that's where great we're joke. at, folks. Call in. Let me know what you think. Uh, we got a couch guy. We got a new bike owner. And uh, sometimes the, the world will throw you a nice little oyster. Yes. Love an oyster. I love pussy. It smells like oysters. Yes. Lick a clam. Isn't that your name, Shelby? Shelby Royster? Something like that? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, all right. What is that, French? All right, God knows. He's Ellis Island. He was put there as a child. He was left in a basket. God only knows what I'd be without, without Jews. Jews. All, um, right. all right. Well, this has been a, a classic. I mean. Hell yeah. A humdinger. And if you think it was easy to find a dinger that could hum. You got another uh, uh, hum coming. A, another baby jizzing. So I got the big show. This No, not this weekend. I don't know when this episode comes out. Lay it on me. I'm in Jersey, April 2nd. I think that's this Saturday, if I'm not mistaken. What are you doing in Jersey? little one-nighter, Danny Ooh. Braff gig. Oh, the Braffmeister. I don't even know where it is, honestly. Good luck with that puppy. I got to figure out where the fuck it is. Ah, uh, shit. Hold on. I got it right here. All right, he's got it, folks. The Dojo of Comedy at Tiff's Morris Plains. Sounds like a hell gig, frankly. Yeah, it could be. Morris Plains, this Saturday night. Uh, <laughs> tickets are 25 bucks. Steve Big Dick Rogers is coming. Dirty Rascals Comedy, it's called. Ooh, called. that sounds fun. 
And then uh, April 14th through the 16th, of course, Laugh Boston. Get your tickets. That's going to be fun. Yes. Big holiday weekend. Hometown queef. Buffalo, April 21st through the 23rd. I got, uh, oh, shit. I got so many dates. Yeah. Austin, May 5th through the 7th. Raleigh, good nights, May, Ooh. I think, 14th through the 20, whatever the fuck, 7th through the, whatever. The next week after that, go check them out. Raleigh's good night. I got Nashville Zanies in August. I got San Francisco Punchline in June. Oh, my God. I got a Vancouver makeup date, Rickshaw Theater, June 11th, I think. Toronto's getting made up July 29th. Wow. Uh, Fun cities. A lot of fun stuff. Uh, Yeah, a lot of fun shit. Love it. And then I'm going back to Tacoma again. And a special and a movie. May 30th, April 29th is the special. Go subscribe to my YouTube. The special is going to be huge. Big special. And a big movie. A lot of stuff in the can right now. Big can. Cans. Cons. I'm um, at the Dania Improv in Florida. Dania Beach. Helium, Indianapolis. Carolina Theater in Raleigh. Stand Up Live in Phoenix. Calusa Casino Resort in California. Magoobies in Baltimore. Addison Improv in Dallas. Uh, stand up live in Huntsville. Uh, doing some gigs with Kreischer. We're doing Red Rocks again. Irvine Improv. Uh, Denver, Minneapolis, Chicago, Cleveland, and Durham. So uh, DC as well. Check those out. MarkNormanComedy.com. Watch our specials. Out to lunch. I hate myself. The new special. Patreon. Patreon is big. The mugs are big. A lot of good stuff cooking. Shelby's uh, rocking and rolling out there. New stuff every week on the Patreon. Tell a friend. Get on board. We're trying to blow this puppy up. George Saint cut it. Where are the cameras? Thank you. Praise Allah. Boom.